What's up folks, I'm Private Hudson and in a shocking twist I'm actually going to be covering a good game today. Yeah, I know, crazy right? This one is Super Burnout for the Atari Jaguar. The Jaguar library is unfortunately known for two things. Bad looking 3D games that run poorly and 16-bit ports that are either worse than the original Sega Genesis Super Nintendo versions or are barely improved upon them. Super Burnout is an exception. It's an exclusive title to the Jaguar, and it's absolutely gorgeous with large detailed sprites, and it runs at a silky smooth 60 frames per second. Developed by just a handful of people working out of a French bedroom known as Shen Technologies and published by Atari, Super Burnout was released in 1995. It's an arcade-style motorcycle racer that's clearly inspired by Sega's super scalar games such as Super Hang-On. There are three game modes. Trainer, where you pick one of the game's eight maps and race through it once. Head-to-head, -head, where you go 1v1 against a friend. And Championship mode, which has you go through all eight races, one after another. In addition to that, there are six bikes to choose from and another one that's clearly overpowered, which can be unlocked via cheat code. The bikes vary in stats. Ones that have higher grip and acceleration generally have lower max speed and vice versa. The tracks vary in their style, with some preferring max speed and others being technical, so each bike will perform differently. The thing is, once you pick your bike for championship mode, you can't change it. So expect to struggle in some of the races since no bike is perfect. Actually, let me correct that. Expect to struggle through the entire game, as it is brutal. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any rubber banding in the AI, so if you end up crashing and getting stuck in last place, expect to finish in last place. I'm gonna be honest with you folks, I had to lower the difficulty to easy, and I used the Super Rabbit Bike for Championship Mode. It seemed to be the most balanced one, with a medium grip, medium acceleration, but a mediocre top speed of 155. I ended up doing well on technical races, even sometimes miraculously finishing first, but on ones that prefer top speed, I finished last. My rating at the end was a C. I don't know if the game is tough to master or if my dexterity and reaction time has become awful, which could definitely be the case, but I could barely race with any of the other bikes. Either way, I had a blast and I absolutely love this game. Once you finish championship mode and get your rating, you do see the credits, which are charming. They drop a censored F-bomb, they post their own best times, and give a heartfelt thanks for just playing the game, as if it was a miracle that it was released to begin with. Seeing as how Atari discontinued the Jaguar just a few months later, I wouldn't be surprised if this game was on the brink of getting cancelled. The credits continued to go on for some time as they write goodbye in several different languages before writing some text in French. Um, as for cons, due to the arcade-style nature of this game, it is short. Going through championship mode will take you around 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how many laps you picked in the settings. Other than that, I suppose you can keep practicing and replaying the mode to get a better rating. The only other con I have is there is no tire squealing sound when you're turning on corners. I don't know why that's missing. The rest of the audio output is fantastic though, with clear voice samples and a serviceable but kind of forgettable soundtrack. Best time. How this small group of developers were able to understand the JAG hardware and pull this off while so many others have failed, I'll never know. Imagine what other games could have been released on the system if others knew how to code for it properly. The first thing that comes to my mind is Road Rash. Don't get me wrong, I love the series, but they all ran like crap on the Genesis. And yes, I know about the 3D one for the 3DO, as well as the subsequent ports to the PS1 and Saturn, I will cover those in the future, but the 3DO one also kind of ran like crap, hence why I'm specifically mentioning a 2D road rash. So is this game worth it then? Well, like most of the Jaguar library, this is a pretty expensive game. It's not as expensive as Towers 2, but it's, you know, still pretty high up there for a retro game. If you already own a Jaguar, I'm going to assume that you're a sophisticated high class individual, and if that's the case, then yes, you can afford it. Otherwise, 
I'm going to say, I don't know. Don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but that's quite a bit of money for an arcade racer. If you can find a boxed copy for around 50 bucks, then yeah, I'd say pick it up. Alright folks, I'm Private Hudson. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll try to cover the rest of my Jaguar library in the near future. And yeah, I'll see you folks next time. It's a record. Two laps to go.